Well, when he was born, you know, when you go, you get the picture in the stomach, and you know, my wife had the, what was that called, sonogram? He had his hands up like this. And I said, this kid's gonna be a world champion. Growing up in Staten Island was great. Um, my father uh, got me into sports at a young age. I played baseball and football growing up. Uh, went to school, normal childhood, I would say. So I played baseball and football all the way up until eighth grade. And then before the, um, the season in eighth grade, football season, my coach brought me to a boxing gym, myself and my team, to get in shape for football. And the first day I walked in that gym, I fell in love with it, quit both sports, and been pursuing boxing ever since. He was a good kid, he loved to play sports, always outside, he used to like to fight. I knew he had the boxing in him because when he played sports when he was a kid, baseball and football, he used to always wanted to go to boxing. I didn't want him to go. Because, you know, no father wants to see their son get punched in the face. So then when he went to the gym, off season with the football, and he loved it. And then he started fighting, and he was did really good. He was 14 years old, he was smaller than guys 27 years old, and he was doing very well. So I said, this kid's got it. It was the first day I walked into a gym, and I felt like, um, it was a feeling I can't describe. Like baseball, I, I was always an athlete, I loved sports, but there was something about the, a boxing gym that just, it, it got me, and I just, I knew that's what I wanted to do my whole life. This is New York All the Gloves Boxing on Broadway Boxing. I'm looking at Patrick, he's ready to put on his gloves. <laughs> and there I'll tell is. you, there's great backstories between these two fighters. You talk about a fighter, and we'll talk a little more about DeMonte, who's fighting with a heavy heart. I spoke to him a couple hours ago. This kid is set to go, Lou, and, and he's, he's fighting with a heavy heart. You have Anthony DeMonte in the blue corner from your top to kids program. Yeah, he's a great kid. All the kids, look, we have three rules in our gyms. We have three gyms in the city, 600 kids totally. We got one in Brooklyn, two in Staten Island. We got three rules. No money for our kids, we subsidize it. Bring your report card, you get in the door, pull your pants up, no sagging. Respect, respect yourself, respect others. And DeMonte is one of those kids. We're very proud of him. We're proud of all our kids. Well, that's why win or lose, the kids that are in, Atlas Tops and Kids, you know, are on themselves as human beings, as people, as students, not only as fighters. So yeah, that's, that's a credit to you, Teddy. Well, thank you. And I'll tell you, the action guys heating up Great. right away between White and DeMonte, just 17 years of age again. Well, every once in a while, look, he'll do it on the front end, he'll do it on the back end. He likes to get off and then get out, use his legs to get out, and then see if he can walk into a trap when he gets out. How old is Anthony DeMonte, Teddy? I believe he's 18, he's either 17 or 18. Young kid. And since the novice division, so these are not two yeah. experienced, super experienced items. White 25, DeMonte 17, yep. Right now, DeMonte's looking to use his legs. Just watch him. He's waiting on the outside, looking to get an angle, and then look to step in at the right spot, then step okay. first spot. If he's not working, he's getting an angle, and then he comes in. Might be 17 years of age fighting a smart fight in this round. Yeah, he's using his intellect this round, there's no doubt about it. And, and he's just landed on the right hand. And, and again, it's the leg setting it up. He doesn't want to be inside brawling. He wants to use his feet. There he goes, a nice right hand by DeMonte. Yeah. This one's still up for grabs. Yeah, I got it even. I got the first round, White, and the second round for DeMonte. This round's gonna tell who's gonna oh, oh, it it like it's a tight fight. Both men come out swinging loose. Stationary two, DeMonte teeing off on him, scoring stealing this round, earning this third. And, and here's round. an example where the stronger man is not scoring more often. You, you, you have DeMonte using his speed, fighting with angle. Oh, oh he got big right hand. hand, big right hand. Oh, DeMonte got caught with a right. But he comes right back throwing. Oh, both exchanges leather under oh, to go. Right hand by DeMonte. Oh, Win. mercy. Great action, under 40 to go between DeMonte and White. Now, as Teddy says, it's a battle of wills, guts and heart. He's got the last charge. Yeah, again, he steps out with right. his left hand down, and he eats the right hand, yep. DeMonte. Yep, yes, he did. White caught him. Oh, here's 10 to go. Really close. Well, we thought it was going to be the fight of the night. These two young men Let's came go. in, showed a lot of heart, showed a lot of poise. They let their hands go. Looked like a title fight for a couple rounds. The winner of the 152-pound novice champion is from the blue corner. There you go. And we're sitting next to a very proud Teddy Atlas. You're sitting proud. You're sitting proud. Brother. Alpha City here. Alpha City here. Alpha City here.
I thought that it was a very close fight. It could have gone either way. I think the Monty's legs are really good. I think that he did some really smart adjustments. You know, I thought the other kid, White, started out really strong. I thought White, White won most of the first round, but then the Monty turned it around. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, that was a very, very close fight. Either guy could have gotten the decision. I think it was well earned. I think we're going to see more of Anthony DeMonte in the open division in the future, and I could see him being a pro someday. So I knew you know, I had a long journey ahead of me, but after I won the first, I, after we won the first one, and the second one, my confidence just kept kept rising, and I knew I was going to pull it out. And I I fought six fights in total to to, have, to get the Golden Glove, so I feel like I really earned it and deserved it. My father got me a job as a longshoreman. It took three years to get in, and. Well, I mean, it's a dream job to a lot of people. You start making 100 k right off the bat a year, and um, I went to work the first day and put the hard hat on, and I just, I felt something wrong in my gut, and I, I, I just knew I wasn't meant for it. Came home, and I told my dad, I'm quitting. I don't want to do this anymore. He was furious at first. I was really mad. You know, I really worked hard for him. You know, it was, he left the job, he left boxing, so I wanted him to do something good, for, you know, for his career. Anybody wanted, you know, for the good for their son. So I wanted to give him the store. He would not even like the store too much. He worked for me for a while. It wasn't for him. Then I got him the job, and then he quit. So I was really pissed. But, but then once I went back to boxing, I showed him how bad I wanted it. I dominated my first amateur fight, fought 21 amateur fights in one year. Um, and the year I went back, then he was behind me 100%. I just thought, um, I could uh, work, maybe work a job like a, a regular nine to five, but then once I got on those docks and had the hard hat on, I knew it just wasn't for me. It, was, it wasn't right. So I had, to, I had to chase this dream. And fighting out of the red corner is a New York City 2014 Golden Glove champion. Tonight, he steps into the squared circle for the first time as a professional. He scaled in at an official 146.5 pounds, and he wears the black trunks with silver trim. Hailing from Staten Island, New York, introducing Anthony the General Diamante. But a really good crowd. Everybody's pumped up and ready to go. This should be a really, really good one. I would not be surprised if a lot of people went to the old venue. Yeah. Since we had to change on two days' notice. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. Both men in the center of the ring. Man, they just playing a lot of speed. Good job. The body's doing some work, throws an uppercut to straight right. Both guys are trying to use good distance. Man, I tell you, DeMonte, he's throwing, he's throwing them from all over. He's coming up on under, he's throwing hooks and straight jabs. He's putting together a lot of different combinations. Straight right finds a home. Gibson responds with a left a little bit, man. These guys are they're swinging pretty good. Once again, DeMonte connects with a couple. Again, with an uppercut overhand. At a counter of his own. Uh, looks oh, like Gibson's, DeMonte was swinging. He might have got punched in the throat. Yeah, and, and and Gibson, he showed that he was done. But I think you're right. He, uh, he's, he's holding his throat. I think he caught a shot that grazed him in the throat. After he took the throat shot, it was over. My father owns a DeFonte's sandwich shop in Brooklyn. And as an amateur, he originally got a, a lot of people in Brooklyn to come watch me fight from that store. You tell all of his friends he grew up there. And um, once, they, once they came and saw me for the first time, then they would just always come back. So he got them to see me, and then they would always come back. And we have, I have the same supporters since an amateur following me now as a pro. And then also on top of it, I'm from Staten Island, a very small island, and I have a lot of friends and family, you know, that come support me too. So I got basically Brooklyn and Staten Island behind me. That's why it's, the following is getting so large. It's been large since the amateurs. Um, we've been selling out every show in the amateurs. It's a dream since I walked into a boxing gym to have that world title around me. Um, it means everything for us uh, to 
set up generational wealth is a is a big um, is a big motivation for me for my kids and my kids kids to be set. Um, that that means everything. But the main thing I want is to spread the word on mental health. Um, use my platform to spread spread the word on mental health. Uh, I train uh, two times a day, two times a day. My boxing session uh, here in, in North Bergen, and then I'll do uh, either strength conditioning, running, swimming, something else um, uh, later in the evening. So two times a day, but that's not the the main thing with me. I focus on is the mental health. In between those training sessions, I'm big into meditation, visualization, and I think that's what brings me to the next level amongst these other fighters. I fall into a 30 minute to an hour meditation every day and um, I think it, every, every, uh, every person has that traffic in their brain, it just calms that traffic and um, clears those negative thoughts and keeps you, it keeps you living in the present instead of focusing on the past or the future. And I think that's very important for an athlete or anybody in life to meditate. All right, gentlemen, you know the rules. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. If you want to now, touch gloves. Good luck. Step back. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to them yesterday, and uh, mm -hmm. they have a, a business, like a food business, like a sandwich shop that's featured in like Food Network magazine. Oh, no kid. It's really cool, yeah. How about that? Ooh. And it comes out with the loop and lift. Like a nice stiff jab. Yeah, he's throwing heat. Oh, he is throwing absolute heat. He looks like he's trying to have a quick night at the office tonight. Uh, he's, oh, he's already put him on the mat. And that was that looked like it was through the gloves even, Chris. Yeah, he's throwing some heat. Yeah, he's, he's throwing power. Drill, you better turn around. Oh, Ooh. he hit him. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, man. It, Chris, it, 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 it looks like Jarrell doesn't want any more of what he Ooh, had already. Yeah, yeah. He, he must have got clipped real good. Yeah. Man, he's got some power. I mean, I told you he looked like a superhero. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. Oh, my gosh. It almost looked like that left caught him under the armpit. I couldn't. It was so fast, I couldn't quite tell. I love that jump and left hook. I throw that all the time, and coach gets mad at me. <laughs> is it effective? It can be. <laughs> and once again, but Anthony's just beating him down in the corner. Ref calls the fight. It's done, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's all done. Yeah, he probably saved that young man from a vicious knockout. Yeah, he was he was throwing the kind of heat that'll pull a man's head off. My driving motivation for boxing on the boxing aspect is to be the greatest Italian boxer that ever lived alongside Rocky Marciano. But what gets me up every day and motivates me is my older brother that I lost in May. Uh, I, would, I would definitely say he's more of a best friend. Me and him were uh, together all the time, go out all the time. Um, but yeah, there was, uh, he was definitely my best friend. We get up every day for him. I mean, we continue to go on for him. It's, I feel like you could either crumble or you could rise, you know? So um, that's what we're choosing to do. And uh, I made that hashtag about a month after um, he passed away. And I just, I've been uh, writing it on everything because everything I do from here on out is for him. And there's not a human being that could put me through what I went through with him, with him passing. So it just, it makes everything I go through, not only in boxing, but in life so much easier. Because I know um, I can't go through that pain with, with anything else in life. Me and my family, I feel like are going through hell right now. So if I could just simply bring a little joy to the family through boxing, it, that just motivates me to work hard every day and uh, keep going. You're only as good as your team. And when your family is your team, and then you put someone like Lenny DeJesus, and then you got the spirit of state of fitness behind you, um, he's... Uh, He's in good hands. Plus, uh, Anthony has a, a deep faith, you know? So that's gonna take him a long way. Uh, he came out of retirement for, uh, for me, and that's been a blessing, because I feel like I'm back in school every day. Like, I, I'm learning new things every single day. And I always believed I could be world champion, and that I will be world champion. But when you have someone that had 15 world champions tell you that you will definitely be world champion, it brings your confidence up that much more. So I, I just can't wait for the future. Um, I'm just going to keep working every day until I get there. I know I'll be there eventually. We always look at each other and we say we're both going through hell, but we're going to keep going together. Like we're, he, it happened such in a, a similar time frame too. When and then we got introduced to each other, it, it had to be destiny that we're both like, you know, oh, like he needed me, I needed him kind of thing. And 
and our uh, relationship uh, is growing drastically. I, I, I love that man, and he's proven to me that he is the real deal. He can bang and he can box, you know? Um, I think his strongest point is, is he can think when he's in there. It's not just instinctual, it's not just rip. He's, uh, he's a thinker when he's in there. Um, I take it like a normal day at the office, fight night. Everyone, uh, I feel like a lot of people try to do different things to get the edge. And I look at it like I'm coming in here, getting a training session in or, or sparring. I uh, go in there and, and handle business. boxing world will definitely see something they've never seen before. I feel like uh, my style is a type of style you can't relate to anyone with my movement and my defense and just um, I feel like I do things in there that you that people never seen before so I think they're just gonna see something different and they're gonna gravitate towards it. I'm in gyms all over New York and I don't see one fighter that trains as hard as me. I think I have the strongest work ethic that, that I ever seen and I think that's what's gonna get me to the top. Well, you know, it's kind of like, if you like a Toro Gotti and you found him appealing as a fighter, you're gonna love Anthony. Once I climb the ranks, um, I'm gonna end up having to face the top guys in the division. And that's when you'll see the best, the best of me because um, it takes a good fighter to bring out the best of me. My son will be a world champion. I believe it in my heart and soul. <laughs> Just wait and see my life.